Hello, everybody. What's going on? This is Corey Lindholm of uh, the PPC Unfiltered podcast. I am joined by my co-host, Michael Nadalin. Michael, how are you, sir? I'm good, mate. It's a nice Thursday morning, 8, 10 a.m. I'm feeling alive. I've got my coffee here. Life is good. Yes, beautiful. And uh, folks, you can probably (laughs) notice we are using a fancy uh, new uh, podcast or Record, meeting recording software whatever you want to call it hopefully this is better for you uh and, and you're kind of watching and viewing experience if you hate it let us know if you love it let us know we definitely want your feedback we want this to be the best experience possible for you um so michael for the topic today we have most important areas to analyze an account another way of saying that is like where do you spend the most time really when you're managing an account? Um, now, this might be different if you're just consulting for somebody or whether you're training somebody up in a, in a department. Um, you know, and Maybe this is different for all those different ways of looking at it. But when you're actually managing the account, when you're doing the hard work, where do you spend the most amount of your time? I figure that'll be helpful for people. What do you think? That's awesome, man. As you mentioned before this call, it's really like the 80-20 approach to Google Ads management and optimization, which I feel there are so many guides online and articles that you can look at about Google Ads, even Facebook Ads, any platform about checklists and optimization checklists, but it comes down to you can't do it all. And like our friends at Solutions 8, they've got like a 92-point checklist. It's like no one's going to go through that every single time. So this is really about us sharing what we do after doing this for like a decade and what we've noticed actually works versus just wasted time and daily checks, you know, first weekly versus monthly checks. And there's different variables in there as well. So mate, I'm excited for this. Let's start. Cool. All right. So I'm going to just, now guys, we're not really like prep for this. You know, we only have so much time, but we've just also been doing it for so long that we're not like, we don't need to build out this huge checklist of things we're going to talk about. So, you know, we might miss things. It's not going to be by any means the perfect checklist or like Michael's saying, because only so many people are actually going to go through all that. And honestly, you don't always have time to do that for every account. Anybody that's ever worked in an agency will tell you um, those accounts, how much time we have to manage those are highly dependent on the spend, right? The monthly spend. Uh, You might have one of your accounts is 120,000 US spends a month. Guess where most of your time is going to be spent versus if you have like 20 other accounts or 10 other accounts that spend $2,000 or $5,000 a month. Those accounts will maybe get 30 minutes a week if they're lucky, and it's probably going to be spent in certain areas. So what we'll try to do in this call is really focus on, I'll, I'll try to focus mostly on the e-com side. Michael, if you want to help out with the lead gen side where you like to spend most of your time, we'll probably find an intersection multiple times where, you know, they're pretty much the same thing, search terms, for example. Um, but we definitely want to come at it with uh, the most valuable insights that we can. Again, though, guys, we might miss a couple of things. So, uh, Michael, do you want to start us off on the lead gen side? Yeah, definitely, mate. So as you did mention, the lead generation side will bleed into the e-commerce side because it really is a holistic approach because we still manage e-commerce clients. We're mostly lead gen, but still have e-commerce. So I always look for universal principles rather than pillared ones. So the things, going back to the main questions, like where do we spend most of our time if we were time constrained? Look, I actually spend most of the time outside of the Google Ads interface, and that's not in Google Ads Editor. I do a lot of advanced reporting where I get all the clients' data from Google Ads, Facebook Ads, pull them into Google Sheets. So rather than having to go into accounts and check what the spend is, check what the performance is, I've got dashboards, uh, Google Sheets that really show it on a high level. So every morning I check in and this refreshes twice a day, I can see the results for the client. So a lot of times when people go into accounts, they're going just to check the results. So I've done things so I can remove all the time and energy just going into the account, checking the results. So the thing is, and you were mentioning this, with big budgets, you tend to spend a lot of time ensuring that the budgets are tracking properly or for big accounts, there's different lines of business that, you know, you might have 10K here, 50K here, 30K here. And a lot of times as well, you spend times doing budget management. So when what I do is very different from what most people should do. So most people should just be ensuring one, that your account is spending like the actual budget, because it's a real risk to underspend. Secondly, ensure it's not overspending, trying to pull it back. 
Third would just be checking what your conversions are like for the last week, 14 days and 30 days and even 90 days against your KPIs. Looking at conversion rates, uh, looking at conversion rates and cost per leads and conversions by campaign or line of business. And so that's the main thing is just like getting a like map of the land. Where are you mm -hmm. right now? Because it's really hard to optimize where you don't know where you are. So if you want to get from point A to point B, you've got to know where point A is. And point A is where, what are your results right now? Are we tracking to spend our money and are we tracking to get the results? So budget spend and results tracking. After that, I'm really simple here. Coming back to the very simple things is just check the search term reports. Now, the other thing I've done is I've built this tool. I've built out scripts and all these things. So I've got a Google sheet that is a really efficient way to do search term reports. So all the data pulls in there. I can do a drop down. It selects the client. I put in a date. It filters it all down. So then I can just like in a one Google sheet, I can start to see what the search term themes are, add negative keywords in, see if anything's that's converting. And so once again, search term, reviewing search terms, but not in the uh, account. But if obviously most people won't have what I have. So it's checking search terms. Uh, the next thing is just checking the conversions. Like what conversions are actually triggering? A lot of businesses are not just have one conversion. They may have multiple conversions. So, oh, geez, look at that. We're going to turn that <laughs> off. The thumbs up. New program, it's, guys. It's We're trying new stuff. <laughs> Have you seen this one yet? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens on an Apple computer. So, yeah, it's uh, really just checking that your the conversions that you're getting are actual conversions, maybe phone calls and finalized conversions. A lot of clients that we work with, especially bigger enterprise clients, have a lot of softer conversions in there and it can derail the account. So, yeah, it's like I'm harping on here a lot, but a lot of it is realistically check your budgets. Are you spending enough to hit your budget? A lot of times people underspend. Check your budgets. Make sure that you're not overspending. That could be even worse. Check your results. Are you actually getting results? And then third, like uh, or fourth, is actually just checking your search terms. Are we getting relevant traffic? That is most of the time people don't do that. If you just do that, that is the 80-20 for me. The next 20% yeah. is purely once that's done really well, it's starting to allocate budgets to high performing areas, potentially moving out high performing keywords into their own campaigns because they would like you want to make sure that they're not cannibalized by other products. Because doing another 80 20 analysis is most of the time there are a few keywords that actually get the result. So you want to ensure that those keywords are really not their budget isn't being cannibalized by something else. Because if you know these keywords are getting leads and sales, you want to ensure that they have the full capacity to run with a high impression share and maximum budget. So those are the things there, mate. I've just kind of gone on my, uh, this is just top of mind, by the way. I've got lists yeah. and things all we do, and we've got heaps of things For sure. internally. This is more proactive work. There's definitely the yeah. reactive work when clients aren't going well and the results aren't going well, mm -hmm. uh, but that's a very different process as well. I love it. All right, awesome. So I, I love this topic uh, for major reasons because I'm just a super nerd. And I don't know about you, Michael, but when I started years ago, I must have spent the first two years just obsessing about the perfect checklist. So I totally empathize with people like chasing the perfect checklist because it just seems like so much, you know, you understand the importance of what you're doing um, in terms of, you know, this is the client, you're spending the client's money. Like you want to do the best job possible. You don't want to mess up. So you're looking for the perfect checklist. And if it's your business, the same thing goes. It's your investment. You want to know, am I allocating my investment uh, intelligently? Am I doing this as best as possible? And for me, uh, I'm going to approach this topic a little bit differently. I mean, there's a million things that we could talk about in terms of checklists, but I want people to really also think about the high level stuff. I, strategically, how are you looking um, where should you be looking and how should, how should, how should you be looking at it? Right. So usually I talk, and I've talked about this in my optimizer article I released, I think it was last year on PMAX, um, optimizations and auditing your PMAX campaigns, but really starting I almost like, like an onion that you're peeling, starting at the top layer. So first, before I look at any data, I want to think about the macro trends or patterns or things that I know about the market. Um, before I look at that data, because those things will have large impacts on the data that I'm going to analyze. 
For example, if I didn't do that and I didn't understand that right now um, the CCI, the consumer index, is down and it's been going down for several months, I might, if I don't know that, I might go into the account and say, like, man, the last three months things have been, really been dropping. We haven't made any uh, changes that would indicate that you know what we're doing is making that impact. What's going on? And then I could spend all this time analyzing search terms and looking through the campaigns and the ad groups and trying to understand where did this drop come from. But there might be a large element of either seasonality, whether that's um, within my business that I'm that I'm analyzing, or in the market as a whole or the industry as a whole. So you need to also be aware of those macroeconomic trends, whether that's search term volume for uh, certain products uh, or categories or departments. Maybe it's in certain locations. Maybe there's something like a geopolitical issue that's happening in one of our target countries, and that's influencing some of the sales there. It sounds like a lot, guys, but honestly, once you're familiar with the business, these things will become sort of like second nature. You'll be like, well, I know our main target countries are Germany, um, you know, the UK and, um, and, and the States. So we're kind of staying on top of those news trends for the most part, the big, the bigger news trends. And if, if one of those countries is going through something, maybe there's an election that's happening. I might consider, depending on the product, is that influencing sales? It's not going to be something that I'm like spending a ton of time on, but just being aware of those macroeconomic trends that could be influencing my data before diving in deep. Now, not every account needs to go to that level of complexity, but I do want to be at least be aware of those macroeconomic trends. And at the lar largest level, it's going to be seasonality, uh, things like that. Second layer is going to be what have I done recently? I always like harp on this with consulting clients. We have got to get some sort of change log. We need to have a nice organized place where we keep track of the changes that we make in our account, as well as omni-channel. You know, did we pull a lot of spend off of Facebook ads last month? I need to know that as a PPC manager, whether I'm managing the Facebook ads myself or it's another agency. Did we just um, add more products um, to Amazon, our Amazon listings? Well, I need to know that because that's going to influence and cannibalize some of the sales for the branding awareness that we're generating with Google ads. So I want to be aware of those changes. I would really, really recommend people just create a simple Google sheet if that's what you like to use and just have, you know, date of the change. What was the change? Most importantly, why did I make that change? Because this helps you in, in getting better at thinking through your changes and especially helpful for when it's in the future and you're looking back at like, why did we ever change the target return on ad spend? There we go. Oh, right, because I did that 16-hour analysis where I compare bidding strategies and blah, blah, blah. And I realized that this was a good test. And that actually falls into my next point, which is look at your account in terms of experiments, many experiments going on, maybe not at the same time. But everything is being tested. This is why it's so vital to know and stay on top of what did we do recently. Because if you just go in and start looking at date ranges, how do you know which date ranges are going to be relevant for what you're analyzing? You don't. You need to have questions to answer in order to do a good analysis. So what I will usually do right away, obviously recognize the macroeconomic trends, but I'll go, okay, so what are the big things we did recently? Did we break out uh, certain products into different campaigns? Did we change bidding strategies? Did we increase budget dramatically or decrease? decrease budget dramatically? Did we take some products out of Pmax and test them in standard shopping, right? I'm going to look at those things and then I'm going to know, okay, I need to compare this date range post change versus a, a comparable um, date range prior to the change. And that's very important. That's why I really wanted to explain that because you don't want to just do last 30 days uh, if, if the change was 31 days ago compared to the previous 30 days, because that 30 days, you might have been running a sale. You might have different inventory. There might have been something uh, macroeconomically that was way different. There might be some seasonality is different. So just want to throw that point out there. But making sure you're comparing pre and post the changes, that's usually we're going to spend a lot of time because I want to see how are my experiments doing, right? We're in the lab. What, how, how is this experiment doing? What are the effects of the changes that I've made so far? Are they doing better? So that way I can keep pushing that. I think we found something or things going worse and I need to dive in and, and do the diagnostic checks to figure out why that is. And then that can allow me to figure out, is that a search term related thing? Is it uh, a targeting related thing? Is it because we changed the bidding? Um, so those are going to be, that's going to be essentially the next layer is recent changes after that macro, uh, macro look of the account.
I would say more like really quickly, last couple of things just so I'm not like on a tangent for 30 minutes here, but um, <laughs> last couple of things I'll throw out there. I probably spent a ton of time in Excel, um, pivoting uh, product categories, custom labels, again, looking at pre and post changes, seeing what products are on the rise in terms of interest for search volume. Is there seasonal uh, seasonality in our products that we weren't aware of? Um, those kind of things. Also, Setting up automations is really important. I think, Michael, you're kind of already touching on this in the very beginning. Um, you know, you shouldn't be having to go in and look at how your click-through rates or your CPCs or whatever have changed over the last seven days and look for outliers. Like, you might need to do that if you're just doing quick consulting or something like that. But in, it's in your best interest to set up automations, whether that's through scripts, whether that is through Google Sheets that pulls in data. Uh, through the Google API um, so that you can track those outliers. But being aware of any major outliers in your data is really important. Of course, I spend a lot of time as well. Not everyone's going to spend time here, but on attribution data. So looking at uh, customer paths uh, going, you know, are people changing in the way that they start? Uh, we're building awareness with this campaign, but they're actually now starting to convert in a different campaign. I didn't expect that. I'm looking for things I don't expect, uh, things that are are interesting, things that really stand out that I didn't expect to see. Those can usually be signs of success or areas, pockets of opportunity that we can really start pushing uh, some more ad spend towards. So um, definitely product level data. Um, the last thing I'll say, guys, in terms of time management is going to be quadrant. I like to use quadrant analysis or quadrant based projects. So essentially, this is usually will come out in an audit, but I want to make sure I'm spending as much time as possible on things that are high impact, low time. That is my number one thing. If it's if it's high impact and low amount of time, I want to get that checklist done as quickly as possible. And that might just be like several projects that I have. Uh, next is going to be the long term stuff. It's going to be high time, high impact. That's going to be the rest of my time is mostly spent there. Everything else gets deprioritized. If it takes a lot of time to do it and it's a low impact I'm probably not going to spend a ton of time there. I'm probably going to schedule that out as like a quarterly or a, you know, every six month or an annual task. Um, if that's the type of relationship that we have, everything else, low impact, high time, like it's just like nice to haves. There's not enough time in the day to probably do all that unless you're doing the account yourself. This is the only account that you're managing. In that case, get everything else done before you do that. And, uh, just, just to uh, wrap that up, I'd say that's pretty much the last point I wanted to make in terms of time management. Michael, any thoughts on that? No, that's awesome, mate. I think, as you mentioned, like that high impact, low time, that's where the quadrant that this conversation is really based on because for both lead generation and e-commerce, uh, there are so many low hanging fruits that most of the time people miss. And that's where uh, this, that's what this conversation is really about is in that quadrant there for high impact, low time, what are those things? So it's like search terms, budgets, uh, negative keywords, settings, new keywords, things that are like opportunities to open the floodgates to ensure that your keywords or your products are getting the highest form of visibility to actually get leads and sales. So exactly. look, I wish mine was as in-depth as, as yours. If I knew that we were going to do a masterclass on this, I would have gone a bit longer. It's 4.30 for, for me. Morning. It's 8.30 for you. Like, <laughs> people who just wanted to um, uh, just like get the, what's the, what's the BuzzFeed article of this? But as you did mention, and I think this is really important, is you want to minimize time on things that are low impact or minimize time on things that just take too long. You really just minimize time with things that take too long. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> the main thing is to ensure that you just focus on things that actually get results. And it really can sometimes just be for most accounts is just cherry picking the low hanging fruit because most of the time people are not doing that. You can really get derailed by looking at like, what's this advanced PMAX script? Like all the stuff you were saying, like that is amazing. But most of the time people won't have the capacity to do that, won't have the expertise to do that, all the time to do that. So the challenge a lot of people will have if you're working in an agency or even if you're a business owner running your own account or a marketing manager most of the time when I've worked with business owners, they're very in-depth with the account but not getting the result. They're missing like some low-hanging fruits because they're too focused on like the advanced stuff but not like the 80-20 stuff. A True. lot of times working with uh, marketing managers and enterprise clients that have a marketing or digital marketing manager, uh, the same things there. Actually, it's like the account's not doing the basic things. 
and they always want to know the advanced stuff. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, I need to turn this setting off. <laughs> I love it. This I is unfiltered, to... people. This is unfiltered. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 yeah, so the enterprise or bigger clients, they always want to know the advanced stuff, but they're not even doing the basic stuff. And then most specialists, they're the ones who just need to be focusing on the basic stuff because they don't have the capacity to the, the advanced stuff as well. So yep. realistically, like looking for years, starting going back to what you did mention at the start of your segment of this um, podcast <laughs> was the for years when we started off, and I remember I was doing this for years, watching every video on optimization, downloading every free PDF guide and like taking it all and kind of putting it into my own list. It was like some super list. Yep. And then I just realized I didn't do any of it. And then I was like, well, what, what's the stuff that actually works for me? And then I do that. And then when that stuff works, I get on with life. And when it doesn't work, I go to the advanced optimization list. So there's like a real approach that you should have. Just like, what are the things that I know work for me and my clients based on my experience? Do that. And most of the time you'll get results. And then the yep. times where you don't, then go to that advanced list and go, oh, maybe I'll try this stuff out. So yeah, mate. Hundred percent, and and sort by cost. <laughs> I'll just throw that in there. Sort by cost, ladies and gentlemen. Am I right, Michael? I mean, sort by clicks, sort by cost. So many people forget that simple, simple wisdom. Um, when you get lost in tables of data, ads data. Guess what? You should probably sort by cost. Not every time. Sometimes you're looking for visibility. Sort by impression. But just as a sort of side joke, no. sort by cost. If you want a simple, simple. I, I don't things. think that's a joke, mate. That's actually so powerful. A lot of times in accounts, you should just be doing descending by cost or descending yeah. by clicks or descending by yep. results. Yep. And in that, that could be in a Google sheet. That could be an Excel file. Could be in the account. But that is like yeah. what a profound drop of a drop of knowledge, mate. <laughs> I'm going to take that. Take it, take it. <laughs> I must have stole it from a Reddit post like 100 years ago. So, <laughs> Awesome. Love okay, it. well, mate, let's wrap this one up. Uh, cool. Corey, let people know where they can find you, mate. Yeah, guys, um, I post on LinkedIn every once in a while when I get the, when I get the feeling for it. And uh, I'm dropping YouTube videos every once in a while, so catch me there as well. Awesome. I am on uh, LinkedIn as well, Michael Natalin. I'm on YouTube for this channel here and then also the Market Lead channel and then marketlead.com.au as well. So, Corey, mate, wonderful to chat again and let's jump into our next episode. But Thank you, sir. People are going to have to wait for another week now. Sounds good. <laughs> Talk soon. <laughs>